Hey everybody, welcome to my video on utility maximization of perfect substitutes. Uh, in this example, X and Y are exactly perfect substitutes. They enter the utility function in the same way, neither one receiving any weight over the other. Uh, the utility function is just a square root function, and X and Y are substitutable. Alright, budget constraint. We got 30 bucks to spend, but good X is cheaper than good Y. Good X costs 750, good Y costs 15. There's our budget constraint in a nutshell with everything substituted in. We can solve for good y, and we see that it's equal to 2 minus 0.5x. Now, we don't need to use calculus, even though we have a square root function here. We don't necessarily need to use calculus. We can do some intuition. When we have perfect substitutes, there's an exact trade-off. So here's a look at our utility function. We can see that the square root makes it so that z increases at a decreasing rate as we increase our inputs, but it's also weirdly flat because of x and y entering equally. So let's take a look at some indifference curves and we'll talk about what they mean. Uh, first indifference curve to show, utility equals one. The intersection of those two surfaces is every point every pair of x and y that gives the same utility, utility equals 1. And it's that, a perfectly straight line. If the indifference curve is straight, you've got yourself perfect substitutes. And if it weren't straight but it were close, it'd be somewhat substitutable. You get the idea. This is the extreme case where there's total indifference between the goods. It does not need to have a slope of 1. Uh, you could have y have a certain weighting within the function or x, it doesn't really matter. As long as it's straight, it's perfect substitutes. Let's get another indifference curve. Here's an indifference curve where utility is equal to the square root of two. It's again, it's another section of the, of the utility function. And here's one where utility equals two. Again, these indifference curves are tracing how far up the mountain we go. And our objective as a utility maximizing consumer is to go as far this way as possible. That's where we get the most benefit from our good. All right, now let's introduce our budget constraint. Y equals 2 minus 0.5x. What's that look like? Well, it, we can either buy 2 units of good Y or 4 units of good X. And how do we decide how much to buy? Well, let's look at one. To get one utility, well, that's well within our means. We can afford anything along this line, so let's not buy anything on that line. That's pointless. Uh, let's look at something that gives us a square root of 2 utility. Well, that touches our budget constraint. You see, right over here, uh, our budget constraint touches an indifference curve right there. But here's the thing. We can move farther up the mountain by buying good x instead of good y. Why is that? We value them the same, but x is cheaper. So we'd be better off spending our resources and buying all of good x instead of good y. So something like that. Uh, we see that the indifference curve that went with the utility of level 2. We can buy 4 units of good x and none of good y and we will get as far up the mountain as possible if we do that. Okay, now a couple of changes, just for fun's sake. We could make good X and good Y have the exact same price. Uh, so we can make that graph have a, the budget constraint have a slope of one and buy either three of one or three of the other, in which case there is no unique solution because that baby is always going to be parallel to my indifference curves. Uh, let me do one where it's 3 to the 0.5. Yeah. So if prices are the same and they enter the utility function equally, there isn't a unique solution. The reason we had a unique solution before was because of the different prices. Uh, so it made it so we could buy more X, and since X was as good as Y, 
by a bunch of X. Uh, this video is short. Hope it was helpful. If not, too bad. Thanks for watching, guys, and good luck. Yeah. Happy econing.